thanks Typographics for having us. Um, Hi, everyone, can you hear me? The look on her face was delicate. So were my dreams. The same unspoken story, like going back in time. Kokab, the old lady with good taste, puts homemade bread, butter, yogurt, and cheese on the table. The longest night of the year, Yalda, we all stayed up till dawn, reading Hafez poems under the candlelight without electricity during the war. All once upon a time, all the crows who never found home. Memories of their neighbors' rice puddings and the New Year cookies. Ice cream with homemade jam or the frozen berries. A bicycle, a steep hill, starting to pedal all evading hopeful eyes, pockets full of marbles. Beginning of the summer, rolling down the hills full of joy. Tiny shovel and rake, playing with the beach sand. How many sandals have I lost? Surrender kites, the Caspian Sea, and tired horses to carry the timid kids around. Any socially aware minority has had at least two life-altering experiences. The moment they realized they were different and the moment when they realized they were considered a problem. Du Bois pinpoints the exact instance at which both of these life-altering encounters took place for him. It dawned upon me with a certain suddenness that I was different from the others, or like them perhaps, in heart and life and longing but shut out from their world by a vast veil. I had thereafter no desire to tear down that veil, veil to creep through. I hailed all beyond it in common contempt and lived above it in a region of blue sky and great wandering shadows. Du Bois's theory of veil visibility and invisibility, as well as his emphasis on second sight, are equally relevant with regard to our study of the immigrant's social experience. Sufis, also known as Verling Dervishes, have spoken of a similar concept with regard to veil, which at once veils and reveals the inner essence or meaning of various aspects and dimensions of all reality. Some veils reveal, others hide. The Sufi knows them. The thee and the me are veils which hide. When there is no more of thee and me, the mystery may be revealed. Behind the thee and the me lies the mystery of the we, unity. I was from Tehran, land of philosophers and no idols. In my land of birth, smile is a sin. Worry is behind all the mask. Every passerby carries a bag full of grief. Our installation parade, which translates to curtain or veil, is a premise about material and immaterial spaces, a participatory artwork that expresses our perspective on different aspects of migration, such as realms of contradiction, double consciousness, um, and unity. Here, the curtain is a metaphor for the pineal gland, where material body and immaterial mind causally interact. The immateriality, the mind, is hidden behind a curtain body. Through radical and direct handling of the object, opening the curtain, and language, reading the poem, the immaterial reveals itself. The dematerialization process shifts the interest from the object, the curtain, to immateriality, the space behind. The term dematerialization highlights the process of distancing from an object but that object, but that distancing is conceptual. That, this does not imply that, mat, ma, that materiality disappears altogether. It simply means that the curtain is obsolete by the process of perception. Black color of pales, black color of public, black color of religion. 
I have worn black as constant as my teenage insecurity alarms. I have danced my sorrows and have drunk the pain. Curtains both conceal and reveal. They do not only mark a threshold, they constitute one. Parde is about the in-betweens, the thresholds, and the non-retinols that stretch the limits of articulation, the border zones, non-places, transitional spaces, and spaces in between are often discussed in terms of the liminal in the field of social anthropology. Concepts of liminality have long shaped debates around the uses of space and development of identity, specifically in regards to different forms of travel, such as tourism, migration, and pilgrimage, and the social, cultural, and experiential landscapes associated with these and other mobilities Unlike traditional perceptions of liminality, such experiences are interminable rather than temporary. The individual is never recollected back into a stable social landscape, but instead remains perpetually disoriented in limbo. Here, we would like to draw an unusual comparison between the Red Room in Twin Peaks, the TV show by David Lynch and Mark Frost, from the 90s and Bijan and Manish's story from Shah Nameh by the Persian poet Ferdowsi, written in the 10th century. Bijan is a Persian knight who encounters Manijé, the daughter of Afrasiab, the evil king of Turan, and falls madly in love with her during his travel to Turan. He follows Manijé into her tent where they have endless feasts, losing any sense of time. After spending three days and three nights, with Manijé, Bijan wakes up only to find himself in Afrasiab's palace, realizing that he was put to sleep by Manijé. We would argue that here the tent acts as a transitional space, similar to our concept of veil, which distorts the spatio-temporal continuum. Similarly, in Twin Peaks, Agent Cooper follows Annie behind the red curtains into the red room, where he he disappears for an extended period of time, entering an entirely new, di new dimension that has its own logic, where he confronts his own shadow self. Inside the Red Room, the spatial and temporal boundaries dissipate and disappear. Deputy Hawk mentions that the legend suggests the pilgrims would confront the dwellers on the threshold, their own shadow self, on their journey through the lodge. If this challenge was not met with perfect courage, the, ch the lodge would utterly annihilate their souls. Lynch himself recognizes the quasi-absent temporal and spatial characteristics of lodge by referring to it as a free zone completely unpredictable and therefore pretty exciting and terrifying. Here, the red curtains represent gate the gateway to the red room, suggesting a distortion in a spatial-temporal continuum. The red room itself acts as a transitional space, a limbo, similar to the tent in Bijan and Manish's story. We would argue that the use of fabric in both structures, the red room and the tent, is critical in illustrating the concept of transition and migration from one world to the other. One day I heard your voice as clear as day Bold, you told me I should never stay. The grass is not black on the other side of the border. Your voice was so strong and so surreal. Me, I don't need your guide. Why do you want to take me through the wormhole? You, face of gravity possesses a spin. Would you play along when the games begin? Out of all the variations that you could have for me, I see myself a skater skinning on ice keeping my balance by losing control. Elephant step or ant step, Madam asked me to leave and I had to say yes. Journey's threads were pulling my legs, the quest of finding home. Homes weren't home, just some cold structures, just some absurd skeleton. Untrusted, repeated, and uneven, I long for home, dragging along my bag of insecurities.
questions around notions of identity and integrations are always at the core of migration. Social identities are fluid, multidimensional, and performative. A migrant's notion of identity is continuously in the state of flux, evolving into a unique sense of self by integrating into a new uh, society with different cultural values. Our collaborative installation, Integrate Assimilate, explores the notions such as transnational identity, visualization, visualizing the process of identity metamorphosis through the use of typography. It gives the typically 2D medium a new sculptural life and reinterprets the familiar forms of letters as bodies, stringing together 29 sheets of paper to create a cavernous path between two custom letter forms. Aleph, the first letter in Perso-Arabic alphabet, and Z, the last one in Latin script alphabet. The total number of sheets represent the average number of letters in Farsi and English alphabets combined. Take me back to the beginning, to the beginning of the words, to the mesmerizing fire flames, to the jumping over the campfires, to the my yellow is from you and your red is from me, to the days of never coming, to the nights of grandma's stories. In Phenomenology of the Alien, Bernhard Waldenfels states, Alienness in its radical form means that the self in a certain way lies outside of itself. As a result, immigrants can suffer from a damaged self-image shaped by the perceptions and treatment of the society, and their lives in turn can be easily shaped by stereotypes perpetuated by mainstream culture. According to Mariana Ortega, the conflict arises because one sees oneself as different in different worlds, for example, as playful in the Latino world and unplayful in the Anglo world. Mario Lagones argues that sometimes the immigrant has a double image of themselves, and each self includes as important ingredients of itself one or more attributes are incompatible with one, more or one or more attributes of the other self. This experience of seeing oneself in two very different and sometimes conflicting ways could be also referred to with the term double consciousness coined by Du Bois. Lugones sees the possibility of liberation in the very in-betweenness, in the liminality of the immigrant. She is profoundly aware of the intricate nature of consciousness as it relates to, to selves in the margins and provides phenomenological accounts of several world travelers who are deeply conscious of the contradictory aspects of their multiple selves. Migrants not only are capable of having a double image, but also what Ortega refers to as multiplicitous imaging or consciousness. The multiplicitous self has multiple perspectives obtained from various worlds, multiple visions of how the self is, is seen in those worlds, as well as numerous self-understandings. Such perspectives might overlap, allowing for the possibility of looking and interpreting the world differently and for the possibility of freedom. You, we meet somewhere near the event horizon. I'll set you free, good people. You are close, dream on. She cannot return, she cannot be returned. There is no past, there is no future in Neverland. There is fantasy, there is fallacy, and there is hard lines on her hands. She follows the lines. In our hybrid fiction autobiographical project, Resident Alien, Alien Resident, personal history, memory, and culture symbols are deconstructed and remixed, exploring themes of uprooting, dual culture, metamorphosis, and identity. The poem that is read throughout the presentation is the self-realization of the unconscious, the conversation between the past self and the shadow self. Through, um, shadow self throughout the poem is happening in the mind of the present self. The narrative deconstructs the struggle of searching for a cohesive identity that occupies the immigrant's mind. What we perceive as sequences of events, 
is in fact a flow of memories in the persona's mind. On the surface, the story starts from sometime in the past, the childhood, in her native country, and it evolves through the events and personas to now and here. As the story progresses, the main personal search for a cohesive identity is further complicated by the unexpected appearance of the shadow self. This is the turning point of the story where the shift between the internal monologue to inner dialogue happens, where the other eye convinces her with promises to let go of her past and follow her dreams. That's when the nowness starts, the state of anguish and anxiety where the real decision is made. The third section in an unsettling tone is the state of transition and facing reality and emerging disappointments. It's about the difficulty that the main persona is going through in reconciling her first and adapted identities. At the end, we have a moment of reuniting the past self and the new self, and the emergence of the third unknown version of the self. The implication is about the juxtaposition of persona's proximity to and alienation from a solid identity that have led to a dual identity shifting constantly between the known and the unknown, the resident and the alien. Speaking the language of heart, it was hard to translate, but easy to understand. She learned how to say her name the way they liked it and colored her hair to resemble theirs, wearing black to reclaim the memories of the Neverland. Speaking a forgotten language, whispering lullabies of not belonging. Our nonlinear story is composed of three time periods past, future, past, and present. Each time period is associated with a different stage of the character's metamorphosis, while past and present point at the beginning and the end of our character's journey. Future past refers to the point in the future that is perceived as already emerged in the past. The three main characters in the narrative are represented with three different cuts of the same custom typeface. The past and her nostalgic and joyful memories of the past and her naive and dreamy understanding of the world are represented with an extremely bold and rounded type that seems to be a playful face at a first glance. However, a closer look at the details of it reveals its false geometry and absurd counterforms. The second character, also known as Shadow Self, or the intruder, is represented with the angular cut of the typeface. Shadow self encompasses everything that the past self is in, and yet it is the shadow of the past self. The proportions are identical to the rounded face, but the curved corners have all been replaced with the sharp and perpendicular angles. The third character, which appears at the very beginning and the very end, also known as present self, is represented with the third cut of the alien typeface. It is the cut that retains its characteristics from both the other two cuts or personas. While some of the letter forms might be a clear fusion of the two other cuts, just like the letter G or letter M, others represent the idea of transformation of the character in the story. For instance, the tail of the letter Q goes from a straight vertical line with a round terminal to a curved one with a flat terminal. While these three cuts have distinct qualities, they feature identical prop properties, proportions across the board, referring to the different characteristics of the three personas while hinting they're all in fact the same persona. The Persa Arabic version of the alien typeface serves a completely different purpose. It refers to the origins of the persona. It appears more dominantly towards the beginning of the narrative where the ties between the persona and her past are stronger and disappears gradually through the end where she is farther removed from it. The Persian Arabic typeface features properties that align with those of the third cut of the Latin version. However, neither of the typefaces inherent aesthetics 
or homogenize nor compromise in order for them to work with each other. Rather, their different characteristics complement one another. Walls of promise were falling off. She was different, she is different, she will be different. She has changed, she has joined, she has become one. She is me and you. Thank, Thank you, you. Typographics. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>